Chapter 1 The Imperial Star Destroyer Chimera slid through the black of space, its only companion, the silent gas giant world of Pesatine far below. Admiral Pellion was standing at the forward viewport, gazing out at the dead planet, when Captain Ardiff arrived on the bridge. Report from Major Hart, Admiral, he said briskly. All damage from that pirate attack has been repaired. Your ship is back to full fighting readiness. Thank you, Captain, Pellion said, carefully hiding a smile. In the thirty hours since the failed attack on the Chimera, Ardiff had gone from believing it to be a raid by New Republic General Garm Bell Iblis to suspicions that it had been engineered by dissident Imperial elements, to similar suspicions involving similarly dissident rebels, and was now apparently convinced that a pirate gang was responsible. Of course, in all fairness, Ardiff had had the past thirty hours to cogitate on his theories. The text preliminary report on the debris from the destroyed Kaloth battlecruiser had certainly influenced his thinking, too. Anything new from the patrols? Pellion asked. Just more negative, sir, Ardiff said. Still no indications of activity anywhere in the system. Oh, and the sensor stealth assault shuttle you sent on the attacker's escape vector also just checked in. Still no trace. Pellion nodded. As expected, really. Anyone who could afford to buy and fly a battlecruiser usually knew a few tricks about hiding it. It was worth a try, he told Ardiff. Have them try one more system. We can transmit that far without relays. If they haven't picked up the trail by then, order them back. Yes, sir, Ardiff murmured. Even without looking, Pellian could sense Ardiff's hesitation. A question, Captain? He prompted. It's this communications blackout, sir, Ardiff said. I don't like being so completely out of contact this way. It's like being blind and deaf, and frankly, it makes me nervous. I don't much like it myself, Pellion conceded. But the only ways to make contact with the outside universe are to either transmit to an Imperial relay station or punch our way onto the holonet. The minute we do either, everyone from Coruscant to Bastion will know we're here. If that happens, we'll have more than the occasional pirate gang lining up to take pot shots at us. And, he added silently, it would be the end of any chance for a quiet meeting between him and Bel Iblis, assuming the general was indeed willing to talk. I understand all that, Admiral, Artif said. But has it occurred to you that yesterday's attack might not have been an isolated incident against an isolated Imperial ship? Pellion cocked an eyebrow. Are you suggesting it might have been part of a coordinated attack against the Empire? Why not? Ardiff said. I'm willing to concede at this point that it probably wasn't the New Republic who hired them. But why couldn't the pirates have set it up on their own? The Empire has always come down hard on pirate gangs. Maybe a group of them got together and decided the time was right for revenge. Pellion stroked his lip thoughtfully. On the surface, it was a ridiculous suggestion. Even on its deathbed, the Empire was far stronger than any possible aggregate of pirate gangs could hope to defeat. But that didn't mean they wouldn't be foolish enough to try. That still leaves the question of how they knew we were here, he pointed out. We still don't know what happened to Colonel Vermel, Ardiff reminded him. Maybe it was this pirate coalition who snatched him. He could have told them about Pesatine. Not willingly, Pellion said darkly. If they did what it would take to make him talk, I'll decorate Bastion's moon with their hides. Yes, sir, Ardiff said. But that brings us back to the question of how long we're going to stay here. Pellion looked out the viewport at the stars. Yes, that was indeed the question. How long should they wait here in the middle of nowhere in the hope that this slow attrition of the Empire could be stopped? They could end this war with the New Republic with a shred of territory and dignity still intact. That they could finally have peace. Two weeks, he said. 
We'll give Belle Iblis another two weeks to respond to our offer. Even though the message may not have reached him? The message reached him, Pelion said firmly. Vermel is a highly resourceful, highly competent officer. Whatever happened to him, I have no doubt he completed his mission first. Yes, sir, Artif said, his tone making it clear that he didn't share Pelion's confidence. And if Bel Iblis doesn't come within the time frame? Pelion pursed his lips. We'll decide then. Artif hesitated, then took half a step closer to his superior. You really believe this is our best hope, sir, don't you? He said quietly. Pelion shook his head. No, Captain, he murmured. I believe it's our only hope. 